Hello and welcome to this first look video of Ubuntu Studio 23.04 Lunar Lobster. So if you're new to the concept of Ubuntu Studio, let me quickly explain to you what it is. It is a version of the GNU slash Linux operating system called Ubuntu, which is also based on Debian, with creatives in mind, specifically musicians and music producers, video makers and content creators or editors, graphic designers, artists, and even authors and publishers. But Adam, I hear you say, couldn't I just install software like that on any system? Well, you technically could, but this saves a lot of time because not only is it chock full of all the software you might need, it also has specific patches and complex configurations done for you. So if you want to just be able to install and go, rather than having to spend an entire afternoon attempting to set up, you know, your own sound server on a system just to get it to work with your patch bay, for example, this is the operating system for you. And as someone who makes a living from music specifically, I've been using this operating system for about, ooh, coming up to about three years now. And I can tell you, it's always done me well and has never served me wrong. So let's have a look at how you get yourself a copy of Ubuntu Studio. So I'm on their website now, right now, which is just ubuntustudio.org. And you can either download the long-term support release version, which I've done a video about, or you can download the most latest version, which we're doing the video on at the moment, which is version 23.04, Lunar Lobster. All you need to do is just click on download, and then just download it via either torrent or direct download, whichever you'd prefer. Linux distribution like this can be super, super easy to install. Once you get it on a USB stick, you just pop it in your computer, boot from that USB stick through your BIOS or UEFI, and then just follow the graphical installer. It's super, super simple to install. And in fact, one of the new features of this latest version is the upgraded installer. So let's have a look at some of the new stuff you'll find in here. If you want a much, much more comprehensive look of every single thing you could possibly get in a standard Ubuntu Studio install, then please look at my video on the latest long-term support release. But here are some of the new features in 23.04. So earlier I said Ubuntu Studio was based on Ubuntu. To be more specific, it's based on Kubuntu, which is Ubuntu using the KD Plasma desktop environment. And as it's based on that, as is coming in with that distribution as well, we have the latest version of the Plasma desktop. Although it also should be noted that if you have a particular preference for desktop environments, I myself prefer XFCE, you can actually install basically a version of Ubuntu Studio onto any version of Ubuntu and make it Ubuntu Studio with your own particular uh, desktop environment of choice. And that's how I personally choose to use it. And I'll talk about that. I'll quickly skip over Pipewire. The Ubuntu Studio installer has been rewritten and this piece of software specifically is the thing that allows you to convert any Ubuntu-based, well, sort of mainline at least, Ubuntu-based distribution into an Ubuntu Studio version. And if you have a look at what I've put up on the screen now, this is what it looks like. And I've got to say, this is a long needed improvement. The software has always been fine. It always works really, really well. But other than actually upgrading, you know, the back end, how it works and you know, making it a little bit less buggy and just better implemented, it looks pretty now. And it never used to before. It was sort of like, it was almost Windows 98-esque. But in recent versions, obviously being a distribution for artists, they have made it pretty as they do to everything they do. Something people have been screaming out for for a while is the addition of Pipewire. So this is a new audio server that's kind of meant to replace Pulse Audio, but as far as I understand it, it kind of works in conjunction with it. One of the biggest things people take issue with when using desktop Linux is the sound, specifically the sound servers and them having problems. Personally, part of the reason I actually switched from using Windows as my main operating system to Linux was sound problems on Windows. But, you know, things can always be improved, and they've switched over to Pipewire. But something that is interesting to note is in another page we're going to look at in a second, they actually don't recommend it necessarily for audio work, like pro audio work. Instead, in this article here, which they've titled Switching Audio Setup, they go through how you'd want to allow Pro Audio and Jack to interact when doing pro audio work. Things like recording, sequencing, audio editing, stuff like that. But to the majority of Linux users, this is a massive, massive step forward, and they'll be very, very happy to see that. Speaking about stepping forward, but also some people taking possible issue with it, we have Wayland now available. Now, this is a different display server. It shouldn't really affect the work you want to necessarily do on the system. It feels like Wayland's been just around the corner for quite a few years now, but you actually start off the default of the uh, X11 server. But if you want to try Wayland, you can go to Wayland. They're changing up some of the themes. Honestly, the whole system looks a lot prettier now. Uh, never that it was ugly before, but now it's really, I, I feel like Ubuntu Studio has really managed to set itself apart from just being a slightly reskinned Kubuntu and actually making itself look just a little bit prettier, as you'd expect from a load of artists to be able to do. And of course, there's always the Backports PPA where you can try to get even newer software if you wanted to. 
Now if we go into a little bit more specifics here, to do with which particular pieces of software have been upgraded, obviously we're talking about Pipewire here. It's interesting that Studio Controls is no longer included by default. I'm not, I wonder what they've actually done to replace that. Instead, you can still download it or you can do something else, I suppose. Uh, Race Session has been upgraded. So has Carla, the LSP plugins, Audacity, Ardor. Great for me to see. I love having Ardor upgraded. And a new piece of software, Perchance. Perchance. Critter, Dark Tempest, Digital Campbell been upgraded. And for video, OBS Studio Blender, Cajun Live, which is my personal video editor of choice. Free show, open LP, and Q Light Controller Plus. This video specifically is being worked on with OBS, Cajun Live, and Ardor if I need to do some audio editing in it. It's interesting that GIMP didn't get an upgrade, the GNU image manipulation program. Now, to talk a little bit negatively, uh, they've got a known problems bit here, but most of this is to do with KD problems that it may or may not have. But I've been experiencing a couple of little issues with the system. On my main system, where I run it with XFCE, I've actually had the system crash twice and boot me out to the login screen. That said, I did a system upgrade literally the day it came out, so I might be experiencing some early adopter issues. VirtualBox has had quite a few problems, as this system, what we're currently in at the moment with the mainline version of the Studio, is in VirtualBox. Uh, not only am I having problems of it freezing, but you might notice occasionally if I stop moving my mouse cursor, a lot of black lines have started appearing. That's why I'm sort of scrolling up and down and moving my cursor so much. Nothing specifically to do with the Ubuntu Studio team, but that is something a little bit annoying about 23.04. That said, if you want absolute stability, you're normally better off staying to the LTS, the long-term support release versions of Ubuntu and Ubuntu Studio, as they are supported for two years, whereas this is the six-monthly release, which I think is supported for nine months. This gives you the absolute most up-to-date software Ubuntu can offer, but, you know, you might get a couple of issues here or there. Personally, for me, I like having things as updated as possible, and so I always use the most up-to-date version, and this is, you know, this is my, I would say, my mission-critical computer, my own computer, and I still choose to have the most up-to-date features, even if I do get annoying things like bars appearing on the screen when I'm trying to film a video. Thank you very much, VirtualBox. So let's run through some of the heavy hitters of the software, um, specifically includes Ubuntu Studio uh, now. Uh, in the top bar, it's quite nice to see, they I think they did this a little bit last time, but they've added to it now, where they're putting what they believe, they've been the developers in this case, the most important pieces of software up in the top. So of course you have Internet Browser, we have one of the new ones, Perchance, the patch-based software. Ardor, which is a digital audio workstation, think like Pro Tools or Cubase if you're used to that. OBS Studio, uh, normally for a lot of people this doesn't require a introduction, but just in case you don't know, it is streaming and screen recording software. I'm using it to record this video at the moment. Critter, which is a digital painting program. GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program. People argue between which of these is better. It seems to be just whatever you prefer or whatever you're more used to. If you need something that is a free and open source equivalent to something like Photoshop, these have got you covered. Cajun Live, which is an equivalent to something like Sony Vegas or... Well, it's not called that anymore, is it? Well, Vegas, whoever makes that, and Adobe Premiere. Great video editor. Sometimes it can be a bit crashy, but then, as far as I know from people who use Premiere all the time, this doesn't seem to be quite as crashy as that. So, uh, you know, might be a little bit more stable. Digiscam, which is photo management software. Darktable, which is more for, like, specific photo editing. So, say you're a photographer. And then we have, obviously, the settings. A lot of people don't consider that, but I find myself often having to jump to the settings. Makes your life a bit easier. So let's open up the start menu and have a look through things. Uh, Ubuntu Studio always adds these three categories to a base version of Ubuntu. So in normal Ubuntu, you wouldn't have audio production, graphic design, and video production as their own categories. But in Ubuntu Studio, they always do add it. So we have lots of virtual instruments, instrument editors, and sequencers here. So I'm not going to mention all of those. You can see them as I scroll down. But for, some, for example, here we have Alios, which is an organ emulator. Ardor, the aforementioned digital audio workstation. Audacity, which is a bit of a simpler sound editing tool, but is very, very useful for, you know, quick edits. A lot of plugins. We have some drivers for specific hardware. So say you're still using a Firewire audio card, for example, this can allow you to still interface with it. I know a lot of people have problems with specifically Mac OS, just chucking out compatibility for old hardware. I know Windows can be a bit patchy for it as well, but it's not as bad. But you know what? There's one thing Linux likes. It likes supporting everything for literally as long as possible. I mean, just have a look at Debian. We've got Guitarist, which is an amp sim. Got some drum machines. We have audio taggers. This is very good if you've got actual audio files, actually files on a computer that are audio, which, you know, might not work so well with certain software. I know right now I'm going through um, my music library, which to begin with, I had tagged using iTunes, but well, Apple aren't particularly good at writing software in my opinion, and a lot of it didn't tag. So I'm having to now manually do it myself, and programs like this are very useful. 
uh, LMMS, which is a sequencing piece of software. So it's more based around audio you already have, not specifically like recorded audio and MIDI. Very, very good if you want to do electronic music. MuseScore. And I'm a little bit disappointed actually that they've still included the Deb MuseScore 3. It would be nice if they'd put in the Flatpak MuseScore 4, the newer version. As specifically for me, this is a very, 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 very useful piece of software. I'm always using it for work always having to write out arrangements and pieces using this. Another nice addition, that new piece of patch-based software, Patchance. Q-Tractor, another sequencer slash um, digital audio workstation. And then just more synthesizers and other things. Um, you've got pretty much the main tools you need. You can write music, as in specifically write out notation for it. You can read it, obviously using the same software. Then you can jump into DAW of your choice and use literally all of these virtual instruments, emulators, plugins to get the best sound you possibly can. Under graphics design, we've got Blender, which is a 3D modeler, and it's also technically a video editing piece of software. If you want to get into 3D animation, this is the place to start, as far as I've been told by most people. Digicam, Darktable for editing pictures, GIMP for also editing pictures, but Darktable seems to be more towards photos specifically, whereas GIMP is basically for, you know, anything really. I tend to use them for my thumbnails and other graphics editing I have to do on the channel. Inkscape, which is vector graphics editing software. Vector graphics are graphics where when you make them bigger or smaller, they don't lose quality. They actually sort of recalculate to actually stretch. If you've ever taken something like a JPEG, like a normal photo, and you've stretched it, you probably see it becomes a blurry pixelated mess. If something is a vector graphic, as you stretch it, it'll still keep its detail. Imagine if you zoom in or out on a PDF that's been rendered properly, you'll see that the words don't actually get like blurry. That's a similar kind of thing. K Color Chooser, very, very useful, simple piece of software. All you've got to do is hover your mouse over something and they give you the color code for it. Very, very useful for graphic design and graphic design software. Critter, which is digital painting. Uh, my paint as well. I'm not quite sure why they necessarily need both unless this one is a bit simpler. Ocular, the best PDF view you'll ever see. I use this on Windows as well. As well as a lot of other software for managing your photos, raw format pictures, scanning, downloading photos. And then we have a whole lot of software here as well for uh, calibration and, you know, basically setting up your computer for specific art and graphic work. Under video production, we've got the aforementioned Blender, we've got DVD-NG. This is very, very useful when using conjunction with K3B for burning CDs and DVDs. Some people like me still have a Blu-ray drive and it's quite nice to be able to burn things as you need them. Cadian Live, and it's interesting to see actually that um, they've consolidated down to just Cadian Live because for a while Ubuntu Studio also used to have OpenShot, which isn't bad, it's another video editor, but really consolidating it down to just the free open, open source one that everyone pretty much uses. A very smart move on their part, I believe. Uh, OBS Studio, the aforementioned streaming and recording software. OpenLP, a, a projection software for church lyrics. And then some other software for more specific use cases. Other things of note include... Obviously, a um, web browser, uh, email client, and also the KDE Connects programs in case you use that on your phone. A music player, as well as video players as well. VLC being a very, very useful one is pretty much, you know, it can run basically anything. The full LibreOffice suite, which is quite nice to see because some distributions don't have the full one in there, but this one does. And the last new category that Ubuntu Studio always add in, which is Ubuntu Studio information, basically just links to things like mailing clients, places to get help, places to contribute. One place to help is Ask Ubuntu, very, very useful website. In case you have any problems with Ubuntu, you can just ask a question there and hopefully get a solution for it. It's never really done me wrong. The people on there are really, really helpful. But always make sure you double check in case someone's already asked your question. There's nothing more annoying than people having to go and answer the same question a million times. And there we have it. The latest version of Ubuntu Studio 23.04, Lunar Lobster. I'll leave you with this. I've downloaded it, I've installed it, and so should you. And I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.